You're saying I'm thorax intolerant? Is that what you're proposing here? Now who sounds like the crazy person? Still you, don't worry. Hi, I'm Steve, and this is Then You Ruined It, a podcast where me and Jason try to get through just 20 minutes of human interaction without, well, ruining it. Buckle up, folks. It's gonna get bumpy. All right, Jason, I'm I'm cashing in. We said we were going to do this in the past, and now we're actually going to do it. Conspiracy theory time. What are your conspiracy theories? I don't have any myself. I don't I don't care about any of that. You don't believe in any conspiracy theories? No. Not to steal a bit, but you think the government's just batting a thousand and telling us the truth all the time? I mean, no, but I, I don't have, like, deep conspiracy theories. I, yeah, there's definitely lying to us about things, and I tend to subscribe to the men in black theory of the less they know the better and it's just don't don't ask questions just move along and you know unless you're able to break out of that and be a part of the the solution that's working on this and yes i'm still talking about the men in black (laughs) 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 then just know your role and shut your mouth see yeah i agree dumb people should not know but smart people should so we're going to blow some minds today, and I'm going to talk about my conspiracy theory. All right. Somebody. Somewhere. I don't know if it's the government. I don't know if it's the reptoids. I don't know if it's the aliens. But somebody is making ants taste weird, and I don't like it. Okay. Didn't see that one coming. Why are you eating ants? I am not trying to eat ants anymore. <laughs> Because they taste gross. That sentence had so many different twists and turns to it. (laughs) I'm not trying to eat ants anymore. (laughs) When I was a child, I was obsessed with a little game. You might have heard of it. Street Fighter. And the only way I was able to get enough money to play Street Fighter was by eating June bugs. Okay. Again, explanation, please. Elaborate. So... When I was like 10, I learned that other people would pay me money to eat bugs. And so I would eat bugs for a quarter. Okay. That, that tracks, yeah. That you were that kid. Okay, yeah. So, so I ate a lot of ants. Now, ants I wouldn't get a whole quarter for. I had to eat something like the size of a grasshopper to get a quarter. But p- people was like, I got three cents. Yeah, you eat those two ants. And I'd eat two ants, and I got three cents. That's how I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and made my way in the world. So I know what ants taste like. Somebody thinks he's Dusty Rhodes because he ate bugs yeah. for money. <laughs> Someday my grandchild's going to say he's the grandson of a bug eater. And everyone's going to be like, yeah, it's the American dream. You eat bugs so that your kids don't have to. So when I was a kid, I ate a lot of ants and they tasted normal. Now, if I see an ant in the house and I smash it with my hand and don't eat it. Because if I eat any food without doing a deep scrub like a surgeon, it tastes like bad. And I couldn't figure it out what it was until I like, is it the ant? Oh, yeah, it's the ants. So now the ants taste like kale. <laughs> Just when I think I've got this figured out and where it's going, nope. <laughs> you jerked the, road, jerked the car off the road and now I'm lost again. Well, because you know kale has that... It, I, I, eating a salad with kale in it is like drinking is like drinking toilet cleaner. It has that strong chemical like, this is going to sanitize something. Ants taste like that. So I don't know if the government's been feeding ants kale or what, but I'm not okay with it. I've never watched a full episode, but this is this is exactly what I imagine Alex Jones episodes of of uh, uh info wars are like and also the worst episode ever like i'm just i'm turning it off that coward wouldn't have the balls to talk about the ant problem <laughs> i i feel like he probably has <laughs> it's probably this, this is all uh well trod ground. i've looked no so, one's talking about this that's why i'm using my platform every kid who ate bugs that is listening to me go try an ant they don't taste the same anymore I, I, I bet they don't. I mean, I, I, everything else in our world has so much microplastics and other crap in it that get, causes cancer. Of course, it's going to get into the ants eventually. So you agree with me? 
I mean, I'm not agree. I, I haven't tried them myself, and I can't agree from that standpoint. But I'm saying that makes sense that it would taste different. You also are older, and it's I I think it's scientifically proven that taste buds change over time. So things are going to taste yeah, different. Yeah, but nothing to you. tastes worse. Everything like where your taste buds change as you get older, you're like, oh wait, I can eat broccoli now. Yeah, broccoli is all right. Like no one's ever like, oh, you know what? I used to love as a kid, but I hate now pepperoni. The only time that happens is when you develop an intolerance of something. Like you're like, oh, now I can't do dairy anymore. You, it still tastes good, but the rest of your body's against it. Okay, so you don't think there's a possible possibility that your taste buds have developed an intolerance to ants? You're saying I'm thorax intolerant? Is that what you're proposing here? Now who sounds like the crazy person? Still you. Don't worry. <laughs> really not a concern that i have at this point <laughs> because you didn't eat bugs as a kid and you're not eating bugs now if you had done both of those things you'd be concerned i know there's people out there i can't be the only one definitely picturing the tobias there are dozens of us dozens <laughs> gif right now i'm gonna put this on the internet this is the one that's gonna pop off Thirty thousand I... views in a movie if it is i don't want to be part of it <laughs> if this is success then i <laughs> I want no part of this. I don't want to join this group. Uh, I, yeah, I, I can't speak to it. Cause like you said, I, I didn't eat bugs. I, I think my brother did. I, th- I definitely remember roly pulleys and acting like they were chocolate chips, but I don't think I did it. I think my mom might tell you that I did. And you know, I have to believe her because she watched me do dumb stuff as a kid that I probably don't remember. Cause who knows? Might just knocked it out of my own brain. But I don't remember doing that. And I definitely don't do it still. So I can't compare. And I'm not about to restart either. So this is one you're just going to have to deal with solo and wait for your white knight of conspiracy buffs to join you and take up this cause. Here's the thing, Jason. I'm 100% used to you and I not being on the same level. I'm not bringing this up because I want you to be like, yes, Steve, grasshoppers do taste less like Tabasco and more like Sriracha now, and that's not okay. But somebody in the ether that is the internet is going to reach out, and we're going to connect, and we're going to start our own podcast. We're just going to yell about bugs for 20 minutes every week. I feel like yelling about bugs would probably get you at least an hour. (laughs) There's a lot of bugs. (laughs) Oh, don't get me started about the hornets. Oh, boy. I wouldn't dare. Oh, no, the Japanese death hornets. They're a real problem. I'm sure they are. Invasive species are no joke, Jason. Again, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is just talking about bugs. (laughs) It's different. (laughs) What you're talking about is more unhinged. If you're just talking about bugs, then yes, again, there, there is an audience for it. But this guy ain't it. So, I, I say, uh... Stop eating ants. Just be okay with the fact that, yes, they're probably different. And, yes, it is probably a sign of the end times. But don't worry about it and go eat a twice-baked potato. Ooh, that sounds good. I'd love a twice-baked potato. But here's the thing, Jason. I could not enjoy that twice-baked potato knowing that there could be something going on. Yeah, I could choose to live my life with my head in the sand, just eating these bugs and not paying attention to the fact that they taste different because they got little mind control chips in them. And what I'm tasting is the silicone. The government could be using ants to spy on us. And we would never know if I didn't lick one. Sounds like a real chance for Rick Moranis' character from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids to come in and save us all. Wait, how is making us the size of an ant going to solve the problem? Ants are already the problem. If they're spying on us, then we have to become one of them. Okay, talk me through this. I mean, that's how you infiltrate the enemy. If they're using the ants to spy on us, you have to get low enough. You have to get down on their level. and They're still going to know I don't have a thorax. <laughs> I don't look like an ant. No, you get smaller. I'm an uncle. You get smaller than an ant like they did, and you can ride an ant and take it back to the, the headquarters and see what they're up to. But they just see me on their little camera. I think they're cocky enough that they don't think anybody could get that small. So that the, the the Rick, I, don't, I wish I knew what his character's name was, but that character, the dad, uh, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. 
Isn't something w- wiki? You're thinking <laughs> that's Transformers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah, wit wiki. That is. Uh, I, I was hoping you would pull that out of your brain because it was going to be uh-huh. like a long, disgusting thread that you pulled out that looked nasty, but I'm really impressed with the thing that wasn't the end of it. But then you just got Transformers, and that's just sad. Okay, sorry. I I apologize. Zelensky. There we go. Okay. Did you look that up? Yeah. Yeah. Of okay. course I did. Cheater. So, yes, whatever Zelensky. It, it, he has been removed from society. He's He's shunned. Like, he's basically, you know, an outcast because of his experiments and the things he did. So, the government's completely forgotten about him. But he is the only man that can shrink someone down to the size that needs to fight this problem so he's out living in a, at a cabin somewhere chopping wood with a laser giant beard or with a, like a complex de- series of devices that rube goldberg together to chop the wood and then he has to reset the whole thing and then chop another piece and the government's going to come out and but how but you see the government they're the ones that put him out there they're not going to help me unless no, no, no. no they didn't put him out there he's in exile they, didn't, they had nothing to do with it he just he's been shunned by society not not the government Maybe, just maybe, this one time, the government's not the bad guy. Maybe the ants are Transformers, and that's why I thought of Witwicky. And what I'm tasting is the gasoline in their tiny little motors. And they are Decepticons, and I'm being decepted. That could be it. I'm really just playing out this movie now in my own mind. <laughs> so you're like, <laughs> the, the mean neighbor... Who had uh, was the dad of the other kids comes and he's for whatever reason in the military now and he's the one that comes to him with I'm gonna need one more job you got that in you Zelensky and of course he says yes it's reluctant but he says yes so we can kick this whole story in high gear if we're bringing Rick Moranis out of retirement I want Strange Brew too way more than I want another Honey I Shrunk the I mean this will be this will be the springboard this is this is where we get you know the real the real meat they're like oh man now that he's back he's got to do all this other stuff. After Honey, I Shrunk a Nut Job it really takes off and brings in millions of dollars. He gets Dave Thomas, not that Dave Thomas, out of retirement as well. And they put on an amazing traveling show. How much does it suck to be a famous Dave Thomas, but not famous enough to have made lots of burgers? <laughs> <laughs> so you always have to say Dave Thomas, not that Dave Thomas. That's what he really should change his name to be. <laughs> he should have thought about like, because they're... When you go to get your SAG card, you have to make sure there's no one else with your name. So that's why so many actors go by fake names. He should have thought about it. like, huh, maybe I shouldn't pick the most boring butt name in the world. Eh, he's an unassuming Canadian. They're very nice and very, very just accepting of things. So I'm sure he just said, oh, yeah, I'm finally getting my card. I'm going to start working. Maybe the CAG rules are different. Maybe they are. CAG different than SAG. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gotta go write that treatment. Sorry, <laughs> taking notes. I have given you, I think at this point, seventeen different movie ideas. How many screenplays have you written? Hang on, I'd look through my notebook. Let me, let me get it here. Card. Oh, that was a good. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, zero, zero. I've never, I've never done one. So, it's all in here though. It's all on a podcast. <laughs> I know we've, we've copyrighted all these ideas just by putting them out there in recorded format. Well, so I don't think that's how copyright know. works. <laughs> I think the fact that we've been putting it out there means anybody's stolen these ideas. <laughs> they can finally no, do like, something with it. That's how it works. Like you put it out there in a, in a recorded theme. And they're like, oh no, these guys came up with it first. We can't trademark it, but we can say that's our idea. And people be like, yeah, that, that sure was like, we can rec- look at the recording and when they did the stuff and yeah, they lied. Also, if anyone stole any of our ideas, would be through the roof. Would be like, please plug our podcast on Entertainment Tonight. Please, Rick, I need you. Yeah. Someone comes out of retirement to finally do an indie movie about his friend dying and having to carry his skull all over the world so he can <laughs> complete his <laughs> bucket list. <laughs> like, Shia LaBeouf's really going to be in that? Man. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> So wait, are you Shia LaBeouf? Uh, Shia LaBeouf has to be the one carrying the skull around. I can't imagine you get Shia LaBeouf and then kill him off. Who's going to play the skull? I mean, the the skull is a skull. You could maybe do a voiceover. 
Yeah, either either voiceover, he moves his jaw when only Shia is around and no one else can see it. And so we think he's going crazy. Or there's a lot of flashbacks to all the good times they had. The skull is Timothy Chalamet. I feel like his voice is is, is has enough gravitas that you would feel like it, it would be really funny when he delivers the ridiculous lines that we're going to have him say. Or whoever is going to have him say, we're not doing this movie. We still could. No one's taking it yet. I checked IMDb. You have, you have an IMDb alert set up to see when they steal our movie ideas? Yeah, yeah. As soon, any any alerts for Skull or Bucket List? Or what other ideas did we have? Haunted uh, Babysitter. That was a good one. Sorry, I almost threw up in my mouth. Just you saying that was a good one. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, come on. The Haunted Babysitter, was ha- that one had legs too. And the, the the Mickey Mouse got poop on his hands one. There was one about that. I can't remember that. That was a long time ago. And hey, Mickey Mouse is Creative Commons now, or uh, public domain now, so we can totally do that. Yes. Just got to be Steamboat Willie. If we did the Steamboat Willie, yeah. If we did that version, then yes, it's fair game. Thank you for sticking with us for another episode of Then You Ruined It. You can find more of our nonsense on Twitter. I am at Idahobo, and Jason is at the Jason Sigler. We also do a web comics review podcast called Digital Strips. Find us wherever you get your podcasts.